When we look at the industrial pollution today in our world, it feels like we're drowning in plastics. We all try to recycle, right? But one look in our oceans, it's clear we are not doing enough. There is a plastic patch in the Pacific the size of Texas. Yet we can't seem to cut the cord on plastics because it's so revolutionary. It's phenomenal in so many ways. Yet, sadly, it's going to last us forever. This plastic water bottle is going to last 450 years. It'll take to degrade. And other plastics twice as long. Petroleum plastics is our industrial addiction. It's the industry's meth. And the bottom line is this. We need to find a material to replace plastics. We need to find something. <laughs> Thank you. We need to find something that will behave like plastics, yet is safe and sustainable, even good for the planet. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could find a material that could be used in everything? Seriously, from cars to buildings to clothes, to even single-use plastics like shampoo bottles and Ziploc baggies and trash bags. And at the same time, to find a material that's great for business, good for the bottom line, a material that will build a strong economy. So who's going to invent this? Well, it turns out Mother Nature already has, and it can be found in a plant called hemp. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, you cannot get high smoking hemp. Hemp is not marijuana. Hemp is a cousin to marijuana. They're both in the cannabis family. And yet, industrial hemp, a plant that's been used and cultivated for thousands of years, has been demonized by its association with the devil's weed. <laughs> so when America banned cannabis 80 years ago, hemp was banned too. Hemp is so misunderstood. While we've been under this ban here in America, other parts of the world have been innovating with hemp, creating new commodities for the marketplace. And it's what hemp can do for the economy and our environment that really get me going. Because every single part of this plant has use. And it can transform industries that are creating and generating massive amounts of pollution and destroying our precious resources. So how and why is hemp a solution? Because every part of this plant has a use. From the fibrous stalk to the inner woody core, to the flowers and seeds. It all has utility. And the first thing you need to know about hemp is it grows like a weed. It grows really fast. Actually, you can harvest hemp up to four times a year, depending on the environment. And it requires little to no pesticides. It takes a fraction of the water of most major crops. So beyond it being really easy to grow and harvest, the fiber is incredibly strong. And let's talk about that for a minute. You can peel the fiber off the outside part of the stalk, and it's like gold. It looks a lot like fiberglass. And in fact, it can replace fiberglass. We call it fibergrass. <laughs> and this fiber can be used to transform cars, stronger, cleaner, safer cars. Yeah, cars. You see, back in the day, Henry Ford, father of the Model T, created a concept car out of plant material. His car, the body of it, was made up of a plant conglomerate, and parts of that was hemp fibers. And the body of this car was so strong that when they struck it with a sledgehammer, it ricocheted. You see, Henry Ford had a vision where farmers would be growing for industry in partnership. He predicted thousands of uses for hemp fibers that would replace petroleum materials. Today, people with a sustainable mindset are following in his footsteps. 
BMW, they're using hemp fibers in the car door and consoles of their i3 electric car. Amazing, I have one out front. And uh, recently, this really cool car that was test driven by Jay Leno was given a big thumbs up. And this hemp car, built on a Mazda Miata chassis, is woven with 100 pounds of woven cannabis fibers. Virtually carbon neutral. The body of the car is 10 times stronger than steel and it weighs a thousand pounds less. Just think about the fuel efficiency. It's incredible. Besides cars, this same fiber can be used to solve the issues that we have with the plastics in our oceans and landfills. You see, hemp fibers can be used in bioplastics, which creates a superior material that can biodegrade and be compostable. So imagine, after finishing your little yogurt, you simply throw the cup in the compost. Think about it. What if every pill bottle, baby bottle, water bottle, even every straw was made with plant-based plastics that could safely biodegrade? It's going to take us years to clean up our oceans. And just by shifting over to bioplastics, we could stop adding to the problem. Bioplastics are phenomenal. They're just that's why I work in the field. And beyond cars and bioplastics, this hemp fiber has thousands of uses. Hemp fabrics, for one. So when we think of fabric, we think of cotton, right? Most of us are probably wearing some cotton today, and it's been called the fabric of our lives. <laughs> mm, it's good stuff, right? But cotton has been called the world's dirtiest plant. Cotton takes a quarter of the world's pesticides. These are chemicals that the World Health Organization has rated as hazardous to human health. Also, cotton is a water hog. Okay, hold on to yourselves for a minute, because this is nutty. The world's largest GMO crop, cotton, takes 5,000 gallons of water to produce a mere two pounds of fabric. That's a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Where hemp takes half the land and 10% of the water to produce the same two pounds of fabric. In a world Struggling with climate change, water is one of the most precious resources. Beyond the fabrics, right, we have hemp paper. And hemp paper has a very long history. The Gutenberg Bible was printed with hemp paper, as was the original King James Bible, even the Declaration of Independence. In 1619, Virginia voted their first hemp laws requiring colonists to grow hemp, and they fined those who didn't. It was that valuable. This is what's gonna take for paper. It's gonna take you four acres and 20 years to get pulp, whereas hemp paper, you need one acre and three months to make the same amount of pulp. Pretty incredible. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the pulp and paper industry is America's third largest polluter, pumping over 220 million pounds of toxic waste into our environment each and every year. Three million of those pounds is chlorine bleach to whiten the paper, whereas hemp paper can be used with uh, hydrogen peroxide for bleaching, which is a safe and natural alternative. The environmental impact of shifting to hemp paper could be huge. So we have super safe and strong cars, superior bioplastics, paper, fabrics that outperform. And that's just one use of this plant. 
So let's talk about the inner woody core called herd. Now, herd is used for and highly prized as animal bedding because of its absorbent properties. Actually, it absorbs four times its weight, which makes it an excellent application for soaking up oil spills. And even what's more exciting, not that animal bedding isn't exciting, is its promise for homes and buildings. Today, in America, there are hemp homes. It's true. Certified owner-occupied. Legit. And actually, you can find these around the world. These homes are made with hempcrete, which is an alternative to concrete. Hempcrete is amazing. It's practical, inexpensive, it's strong, lightweight, it breathes. It actually absorbs carbon dioxide. Oh, man, the thermal and insulation properties are off the hook. Truly, this is an architect's dream come true. Hempcrete can be used in flooring, in walls, as plaster, even insulation. So how do you make hempcrete, right? Well, it's actually not rocket science. You take the herd, you mix it with a lime binder and some water, and kapow, you have a material that's going to petrify over time into a mineral state lasting centuries. In fact, there is a hempcrete bridge in the south of France, 1,500 years old, still in use. We need to rethink our relationship to hemp. The 2014 Farm Bill allows America to grow hemp on a very small scale. Fast forward 2018, in the summer, the United States Senate passes a new Farm Bill which would allow America to grow hemp legally. This is very exciting, and we're still waiting for the House to pass this bill. With the shackles off, America could take huge strides forward. I've only touched on a few applications that we can do with hemp. Believe me, there are 50,000 applications that we could be benefiting from. And I haven't even talked about the, the seeds and the flower. And I just, forgive me, you have to know, we were all created with an endocannabinoid receptors in our body. We're ready to absorb this plant ourselves. <laughs> and I have to tell you that. I couldn't live with myself if you didn't know that. There is hope in hemp for a clinger, stronger, safer world. Back in the day, many of us heard stories of the Native American and the buffalo and how they used every part of the buffalo where nothing was wasted. Everything was used. I see hemp is our green buffalo. We're, we could use every nook and cranny of this plant where nothing would be wasted. The UN is calling for a serious throwdown in sustainability. They're calling for sustainable commodities, communities, and new technologies by 2030. The UK is banning plastic starting in 2019. <sighs> yeah, they're going to start. Mm -hmm. And then France, soon to follow in 2020. Norway is, is starting to tax petroleum materials. We need to go green by growing green. So what are we going to do? The global community is throwing down a super tall order on a sustainable world. So where do we start? Let's start with our green buffalo. And let's start with hemp. Thank you. <laughs>